Problems of India and their Remedies Part 1 India faces various problems like communalism, regionalism, illiteracy and corruption. In this module, you will learn about these problems and look at some of the measures that can be taken to curb or alleviate them. Communalism refers to the split in the national community on the basis of religion for political gains. Communalism results in mutual distrust and threat among people living together. It leads to unrest and even ruins life and public property. Communalism keeps religious groups above national interest, which results in hampering the unity and the strength of the country. Communalism can be curbed by taking some precautionary measures, like uniform legal system, equal treatment of all citizens, and practice of secularism. To combat communalism, it is important to inculcate a national feeling. Religious fundamentalism should not be encouraged. Secular education for children will restrain communalism. Healthy media too is necessary for curbing communalism. Regionalism refers to the feeling of people in favor of the local area they live in. Indian states have been organized mainly on the basis of language. Regionalism is tolerable to a considerable limit as it facilitates people to take initiative for the all-round progress of the local areas. Regional historical background, social system, economic considerations, cultural diversities and geographical aspects together promote regionalism in India. The regional struggles in the various parts of the country too hamper the development of the nation. If regionalism among the states is allowed, it will lead to serious interstate border disputes, river water disputes, etc. All citizens should consider themselves as Indians, regardless of their language and state identity. The Indian constitution emphasizes on national unity and integrity by upholding single national citizenship. It also provides enough space for regional development within the federal structure. Healthy regionalism along with strong nationalism should be encouraged. At the state level, various committees have been set up to achieve regional balance. Some of the examples are Dr. D. M. Nanjun Dappa Committee, Malinadu Development Committee and Hyderabad Karnataka Development Committee. Launching of many projects for the development of the Northeast states is an attempt by the Union government to curb regionalism. Education is important for the progress of the nation. Illiteracy in India is characterized by a wide disparity between urban and rural populations. The rate of illiteracy is high in rural population that mainly depends on agriculture. The rate of literacy is high in the urban population that belongs mostly to the employee class. At the time of independence, the literacy rate was 12% in India. It was enhanced to 66% in 2001 and was increased to 74% by 2011. However, about 26% of the population still belongs to the illiterate class. Some of the reasons for illiteracy are poverty, migration, child labor, child marriage, responsibility of baby care of the younger sibling, lack of interest to give education to children. The government has launched a number of programs to facilitate literacy. In 1988, the National Literacy Mission was established to eradicate illiteracy. The Government of India launched the Sarva Shiksha Abhiyan in 2001 to provide free education for children of 6 to 14 years. It provides education to girls and physically challenged. 
Sakshar Bharat program was launched in 2009 with an objective of achieving 80% literacy. Under the Article 21A of the Indian Constitutional Right to Education, 2009 Free and Compulsory Education has been implemented. Corruption refers to the inducement to do wrong by bribery or other unlawful means. Corruption is caused due to lack of honesty and selfish exercise of power and influence attached to public life. It adversely affects the social, economic and political system of the country. The level of corruption depends on three aspects, namely individual sense of values, socially acceptable values as a whole, the system of governance or administration, practices like bribery, nepotism, casteism, red tapism, all come under ways of corruption. Political corruption leads to organized crimes and is shaped into white-collar crimes or public welfare offenses. It is the duty of every Indian citizen to work towards the removal of corruption. Strong moral urge at individual as well as society level should be encouraged. Strict anti-corruption laws should be brought into force. Right to information should be exercised by citizens to tackle corruption. Let us now recap all the important points that we have covered in the first module on problems of India and their remedies.